G'day everyone, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. And today I'm talking about Australia and the extinction crisis that we're facing and why we're facing it. Australia as a country has been isolated for so long from the rest of the world. Now the rest of the world has connectivity from America all the way over through Russia and China and India and Asia and Southeast Asia all the way to Africa. And its wildlife have overlapped over time and they've evolved for that overlap. Now you come to Australia, we've been isolated for all of history. So Australia along with New Zealand and New Guinea and some of the Pacific Islands, it's been really isolated. And it's interesting that if you went up to uh, Papua New Guinea or West Papua, or the Kimberley in Northern Australia. Pick up a rock and throw it a few hundred kilometers across the ocean to Southeast Asia. When that rock hits the ground, it finds primates, orangutans, monkeys, cats, bears, dogs. Australia didn't have any of them and they're called placental mammals. Uh, typically as well, those placental mammals, and they include what's been introduced to Australia, the feral fox and the feral cat. Placental mammals are typically much smarter, and I think that's because of the evolutionary processes that have driven that over time. You come to Australia, and we have kangaroos that climb up trees. We've got more species of lizard than anywhere else in the world, and we've got these really unique animals like koalas, platypus, echidnas. And because of that, and the isolation in Australia, I like to picture it not that our animals are, are dumber, but that they had evolutionary processes that drove for uniqueness to adapt into a, a changing and harsh environment that is Australia. And those processes mean that our animals are like no others on earth. And that makes their protection and conservation all the more important. Not only are Australia's animals incredibly unique, found nowhere else on earth, but they're amongst the world's most at risk. Now, Australia has the worst mammal extinction rate on Earth. We've lost nearly 40 of our small mammals to extinction in the last couple of hundred years. That's as many as the rest of the world put together. But we're a Western society. Why can't we stop these extinctions? And further to that, Australia is in the top five nations on Earth for our overall loss of biodiversity. Now that's flora and fauna, our animals and our forests and nature in general. Now, why is it happening? Now, for a lot of our small mammals, and this is really what Aussie Ark works with, our small mammals, and we believe that if you can not only save the small mammal, but provide a platform or a refuge for it to exist in the wild, you've benefited so many other species of frog and lizard and bird. Now, why are our small mammals facing extinction? Well, Australia has all the problems of the world, climate change, pollution, urban sprawl, habitat destruction. But it turns out that the feral fox and feral cat that were introduced to Australia by Europeans are responsible for 90% of our small mammal extinction. So they're the big problem. And the thing is that people think that Australia is you know, rugged and remote and intact and pristine. It's not. It really is rugged, it really is remote, but even in the furthest, untouched stretches of Australia, it's still invaded by feral pests like the fox and cat. And so, let's talk a minute about the critical weight range mammals, and that's everything except the thylacine or Tassie tiger, which humans sent to extinction. Everything else is within the critical weight range. Now, why is that important? The critical weight range is between 500 grams, this big, to five kilos, this big. It's all food for the fox and cat. Okay, now the predators our natives used to deal with were Tasmanian devils and quolls, and they don't match up to the skills of a fox or cat. Now the fox or cat have invaded our native spaces, and with that, they've just depleted, and, and in some cases sent extinct, our native animals. At the present time, there is no solution to the fox or cat. You can bait to try and control, you can shoot to try and eradicate, but they're like an endless tide. They just keep coming. Now, something that Aussie Ark employs is conservation fencing. And I just want to go through a bit of an exercise. When we say fencing, a lot of people think captivity. I get it. 
but it's not. We're fencing in a wild place and we're excluding feral pests. Now, I want you in your mind, think about an island. It doesn't matter which island. See it out there in the ocean. You know, a nice habitat, a landscape, some palm trees, a beach, see an island. You don't see a fence around that island, do you? But there is. The ocean is a, a, a natural barrier. The ocean stops the spread of fire, the spread of disease, the spread of feral pests. Conservation fencing is creating islands. Now, I don't want the only place my kids to see animals is to be behind a fenced area. That's not the goal. But at the moment, if we don't create these island refuges, we're losing our animals. And my kids won't see animals anywhere. And that's a reality. There's much work going into gene driver technology of fox and cat, which can essentially uh, humanely control that they either stop breeding or when they breed, their young can't breed. And it's a natural way of trying to diffuse the feral problem. I'm talking so much about the fox and cat, but consider also the impacts of the feral rat, the feral mouse, the rabbit, the hare, the goat, the horse, the pig, the donkey. So many feral problems and they're having a really large impact on Australia. Australia is a developed country. Why are we still having these extinctions? We've got a scoreboard and it's not looking pretty. Now, it's a really hard challenge because we have these feral pests. In other parts of the world, it's about putting habitat aside. And if you put it aside, the natives thrive, but not here. We need other management actions. Now, we have some really well-researched species. We know a lot about them and we're researching their extinction. They're disappearing before our very eyes and what we need is action, what we need is outcomes. Now, Aussie Ark is a conservation organization that delivers results to native wildlife conservation. We need action. Now, how we do that is through a staggered approach. Species recovery, what's that? A species recovery is working with an individual species, building up its numbers, creating an insurance population that's safe, should worst case unfold in the wild. But at the same time, we can then take that species recovery component to habitat recovery. And what's habitat recovery? That's where we address the threats of feral pests, fire, invasive weeds, and recreate a habitat and make sure that it's suitable for our natives. We can then go to the species recovery units, take some of the animals that have been bred and reintroduce them to the areas they once called home. And that's rewilding. A lot of people ask, how can I help? What can I do? And you can do a lot. If everyone did something, it contributes to a massive, massive outcome. Now, to go into detail, I have to say, I'm very proud of Aussie Art. If you want to help, support organisations like ours. But what I'd ask is, we're not, a, we're not the only conservation organisation, but what I would suggest is do your homework. What are you interested in? Look for an outcome. I like projects that have a beginning, a middle and an end, and the end is an outcome. You should too, that's my best advice. Find what you're passionate about. It might be a rare native orchid. It might be an individual species. It might be a habitat, it might be an ecosystem. But make sure that what you're either investing in through donation or what you're giving your activity through, through uh, local land care groups, bush rehabilitation, weed control, rural fire service, make sure you're contributing to an outcome. If we're all contributing and striving for outcomes, it means we go forward. Your homework for today is, I would like you to find two different things, a species recovery project and a habitat recovery project. I'm not gonna give you more information on that. I, I think I've covered it, but look, you can use the ARC really easy. We have species recovery projects that work with a species and we have habitat, the creation of islands, refuge, sanctuary. You can use that really easy and learn and understand it, but you can look further afield. I'd like you to find projects that have a beginning, a middle and an end. One that works with a particular species. The other that works with a habitat. It might include reintroducing species, but please find me a species recovery project and a habitat recovery project and put them, I really wanna know what you're interested in. Put them into the comments. Now, if you've done that and you've got more time, what I want is a picture, a drawing, can be basic, of an ecosystem. I want a forest, it's understory, an apex species, a top order predator, some little species. Make sure it includes a bird, a reptile, an amphibian, and a mammal from that area. Now, that's all for today. Thanks very much for watching. See you later.
Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us, and hopefully you. Uh, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. But this is what I do, connecting people with nature, and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.